Some people now, Marin Morris and the country community mourn the loss of Kylie Ray Harris after the singer's tragic death in a car accident. Nicki Minaj responds to fans who are devastated by her abrupt retirement announcement. We'll tell you what Nicki is saying. Plus, I'm just trying to look convincing as I'm, I've been stripping for a while. JLo lets fans in on her pole dance training for a new movie, Hustlers. Everything is a big thing. It's not coming. Tony Hale has a new animated series on Netflix. He tells us what his teenage daughter really thinks about all he's doing these days. You didn't hear him, Richard. He's in trouble. The Office star Amy Ryan's here with all we need to know about her new thriller, Strange But True. And musician, actress, and director Melanie Martinez has a new album, her first feature film. She's here telling us how she's doing it all. Live today, only on People Now. Hey, everybody. Welcome to People Now. It is Friday. Woo! We're here. Yeah, we made it. Exciting. The weekend. Uh, we're almost here or it is here? Let's say it is here. The weekend is here. What the are you doing here. this weekend? Uh, actually, very low key. It's my wife's birthday on Monday, so we're going to celebrate at some point over the weekend. And she may be watching. Let's Happy birthday to Tara. It. Woo, very yeah. Exciting. So what are you doing? A beach day tomorrow. Probably the last one. Last one, I'll bet. Year. Yeah. Very Honestly, sad. I'm worried about the weather for you. It's going to be 77, which I think is pretty solid. That, for me, we I are you should be worried very all. close it's to be, too cold. It's going to be great. That it's ocean be breeze. Perfect. Andrew, take a sweatshirt. I'm just saying it's going to get chilly. All right. Demi Lovato <laughs> kickstarting our weekends in such a positive way. The singer posted an unedited bikini photo encouraging others to love themselves. Yes, we love this message and that Demi is all about the confidence. So we want to know which of her songs is the most empowering for you. Is it our hit Confident? Is it the powerful skyscraper? Scraper, Warrior, or maybe the throwback song La La Land. Vote on these, or if your favorite didn't make our list, tweet us with the hashtag people now. Do we have to pick? Can we just say everything? We have to pick, Jeremy. Uh, we're going to check in on that in a little bit, but for now, here's what you need to know and what's trending for today. A heartbreaking uh, story for the country music world. Maren Morris is mourning the loss of fellow country singer Kylie Ray Harris just hours after the 30-year-old was killed in a three-car crash in New Mexico. Morris paid tribute to the late star in a touching post on her Instagram stories. Accompanied with photos of Harris, Morse wrote that she was in shock on Thursday and thinking of the singer's family, including Harris's six-year-old daughter, Corby, in the wake of that tragedy, adding that, Kylie, you have always been so sweet and supportive of me. Your soulful voice and Texas beauty was always jaw-dropping, even when we were teenagers at the Larry Joe Taylor Festival. They obviously go way back, a lot of memories there, and country stars Randy Rogers and Curtis Grimes are also remembering Harris as a great person. Rogers telling Taste of Country that Harris made everybody feel welcomed and loved and cared for she was a really bright, shining light. Grimes paid his respects to Harris on Twitter, asking for everyone to lift up her family, friends, and sweet baby girl in your prayers during this time. Before the crash, Harris posted a series of videos on her Instagram stories documenting her road trip throughout the state, where she shared emotional tales about her family living in the area and driving on the roads that she was driving on. Now, eerily, one particular story was about a time that she was little and driving in the car with her father when he hit a cow and crashed. Harris was scheduled to play at the Big Barn Dance Musical Festival in Taos County. A rep for the county sheriff's office and for Harris did not immediately respond to people's requests for comment. We wish everyone the best during this really tough time. All right, Meghan Markle taking a surprise solo trip to New York City to watch good friend Serena Williams play the U.S. Open final. People can confirm the Duchess of Sussex boarded a commercial flight from London early this morning. She's making the trip without husband Prince Harry or four-month-old son Archie. The trip is a last-minute one, according to a source to The Times, who also reveals to the outlet that Markle is excited to support her friend and then go back. On Saturday, Meghan will be cheering on her close friend Williams at the final against Bianca and Rescue. Meghan first met Williams at the 2010 Super Bowl in Miami, where they immediately hit it off. And Markle's last trip to the States was in February for her baby shower with close friends, including Williams. In July, Meghan and some friends watched Serena's match at the Wimbledon Championships. She then joined sister-in-law Kate Middleton for the women's final. Now, the news comes as it has emerged that Meghan, Harry, and baby Archie will not be heading to Balmoral, Scotland to spend time with Queen Elizabeth this season. Meghan has not yet visited the castle in the Scottish Highlands. A royal source says that the couple see Harry's grandmother regularly as they live close to her at Windsor. Meanwhile, Harry and Meghan have announced new details of their upcoming Africa tour with baby Archie. The family of three will arrive in Cape Town, South Africa on September 23rd, the first scheduled stop is the uh, Duke and Duchess of Sussex's visit to a township. They'll leave little Archie with his nanny as they start the official first leg of that tour. A royal source tells us the couple hopes to be able to include Archie at some point in the program, but of course it's difficult to schedule because he is five months old.
I, by the way, I think that would be a really challenging trip. Good for them for making it work. A key and poignant moment for Harry will be when he travels to the city of Humbo, I'm sorry, Huambo in Angola. Harry will visit the location where his mother was photographed as she walked through a demining site in 1997 and will be shown how an area that was a dangerous minefield around 20 years ago is now a busy street with schools, shops, and houses. And we'll have more Royals news coming up as well. Nicki Minaj clearing the air after her shocking retirement announcement on Thursday. The rapper responded to a tweet from a fan. That tweet says in part, can you please just address this retirement thing? You never left us so hurt your entire career. Nicki then wrote, I'm still right here, still madly in love with you guys, and you know that. In hindsight, this should have been a Queen Radio discussion, and it will be. I promise you guys will be happy. No guests, just us talking about everything. And she adds, the tweet was abrupt and insensitive. I apologize, babe. Nikki appeared to announce on Twitter Thursday that she is retiring from the spotlight to focus on her family. Reps for Minaj did not immediately respond to people's requests for comment, but that surprising tweet came as the musician has hinted at a new album as well as changes in her personal life. In June, Minaj said on Queen Radio that she and boyfriend Kenneth Zhu Petty had acquired a marriage license. She says, quote, I think I have what I was striving for, just happiness. It was so hard to get to a happy place. Now that I'm there, I don't want to compromise that for anyone or anything. Then in July, Minaj appeared to confirm that she was engaged and expecting in her Chance the Rapper collaboration, Zanies and Fools. Last month, the star even changed her Twitter display name from Miss Minaj to Mrs. Petty, just days after revealing that she and Petty had renewed their marriage license. Many fans have expressed concern over Petty's criminal past. He's a level two registered sex offender in New York and served seven years in prison for the shooting death of Lamont Robinson. But Minaj doesn't appear to care about that criticism. During a June appearance on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, Minaj confirmed fan speculation that she was working on a new album. She told Fallon at the time that there's definitely a new album. She said, yes, of course. And she added, you're the first to find out of course there's an album. I'm not putting out the date yet, but there is one. So we'll keep you posted on all that's happening surrounding Nicki Minaj. I really hope she doesn't retire though. I will say that. There's, she has to have more music eventually. Yes. So we'll, we'll keep her eyes out. Yeah. Um, all right, you've got more for us in Star Trek. I do, we are kicking off Star Trek today with an update from the youngest Car Jenner sister. Having the title of youngest self-made billionaire in the world means Kylie Jenner can foot the bill every now and then. At least that's what her sisters think. The 22-year-old sits down with her mother, Kris Jenner, for Monday's season 17 premiere of The Ellen DeGeneres Show. In a preview clip of the episode that dropped Friday, Kylie admits that her sisters love to poke fun at her financial status. Watch this. It's only when we... I don't know, when we're like in a group chat talking about yeah. we should go on a trip. And then everyone's like, Kylie, question mark, are you going to pay for it? Or right. just stuff like that. I would, but yeah. they just joke with me, just sister, sister they love. Tease but they're her all really proud of me, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, and do they, but do they really, do they expect you to pay for all this stuff? No, they don't really. No. Just my stuff. I mean, the family in general has a lot of money, so. I think everybody's kind of good, right? Yeah, I think they're good. Of course, Kylie's billion dollar empire is driven by the success of her Kylie Cosmetics line, endorsements and more, but she credits her booming success to the internet and her 145 million Instagram followers, no big deal there. Later in the interview, Kylie opens up about her adorable 18 month old daughter, Stormy Webster, whom she shares with boyfriend, Travis Scott. Watch this. She's so mellow. She takes more after you or Travis? Um, she is the perfect mixture of both of us. She's definitely like a little rager. She loves music, but she, she... was dancing in the dressing room to all of you guys. Yeah, dancing. while you guys were all dancing, yeah, she, she was back there eyes dancing. Off the screen. It's so cute. Stormy is such a cutie. Chris went on to say, she's like a little Kylie. It's really wild. Sometimes she looks at you and I have to remind myself, that's my granddaughter, not Kylie. Ellen then joked and said, starting to lose it, huh? Chris laughed saying, yeah, I am. When I start calling her Kylie, we know we have a problem. Very funny. You can catch the full interview when the Ellen Show season 17 premieres Monday, September 9th. All right, watch this. Front hook. Ankle hook. Knee hook. Come here, you can do the carousel. To switch and wrap. So pole dancing is hard, I've heard, but learning it and looking like a pro in a little over a month is even harder. I'm sure everyone knows by now that Jennifer Lopez's film Hustlers is coming out soon. If the two trailers weren't enough to satisfy your anticipation, the singer released a video on Thursday on her YouTube channel that gives us a closer look at how she achieved her new pole dancing skills. Watch. 
I'm just trying to look convincing as I'm, I've been stripping for a while. Yeah. I've been stripping for a while. I'm comfortable on this pole. Um, and I'm also comfortable with my game because my character is, he really has the hustle down. Wow, and she does look convincing. However, the road to those skills was not easy. JLo documented her early days on the pole. In the videos, you can see she acquired a few bruises along the way. That looks so painful. But she did a great job for learning it in such a short amount of time. In the video, she reveals that her co-star Cardi B, who used to strip before starting her rap career, took years to learn, while herself and the other ladies in the film had to do a crash course. However, JLo was close to not learning any of these skills at all. In an interview with Variety, the singer revealed that she almost turned down the role she said, we were supposed to do it last summer, and I had worked so much. I was like, I have to stay home with my kids and Alex. Fortunately for fans, the film's director, Lorene Scafaria, was able to persuade J-Lo to stay with the project by postponing it. J-Lo will co-star alongside Constance Wu, Lily Reinhart, Kiki Palmer, Lizzo, Cardi B, and Julia Stiles. Hustlers hits theaters on September 13th. So he finally popped the question. If you like it, then you put a little Rizzy okay, on it. Okay, that's not... Oh. That was your post. Okay. That's not my post. All right, cool. So... I said yes. You did. So I'm locked down. Finally. You're locked down. They are so adorable. <laughs> Just two weeks after announcing her engagement to hockey player P.K. Subban, Lindsey Vaughn stepped out solo and brought the bling to Fashion Week. She attended the Vanity Fair Best Dressed List Party in New York City on Thursday. The Olympic skier paired her emerald engagement ring with a sexy sheer black crop top and matching skirt. She looks very fierce here. On August 23rd, People exclusively reported that Lindsay and PK are engaged. In an interview with Vogue, the hockey star revealed that the unique ring has a very special meaning for the couple. Lindsay's favorite color is green, and PK's birthstone is an emerald. Very fitting. Lindsay reveals to Vogue that she and PK never talked about it or looked at rings, and adds that PK gifted her an emerald necklace at Christmas. Christmas, which she loved. She tells the publication that she wouldn't change the ring at all. And if I had that ring, I wouldn't either. <laughs> Lindsay debuted the Emerald Ring on the MTV Video Music Awards red carpet, which she attended alongside PK. They're such a cute couple. Lindsay has been with PK, a defenseman for the New Jersey Devils, since early 2018. They were first romantically linked when Lindsay was spotted watching the Nashville Predators, his former team, play in April of 2018. They made their relationship red carpet official that June at the CMT Music Awards. A source told people at the time, they're in the beginning stage of a relationship where you can't get enough of each other. We're very happy for them. Moving on to this. Three months after her high-profile split with Bradley Cooper, Arena Shayk is bearing it all. Well, mostly. The 33-year-old model stars in a new handbag campaign for Calvin Klein, posing nude in many of the shots. In one of the images, Arena is wearing nothing but a handbag strategically draped across her body. Now, according to the company, Shayk was cast for her warm presence and piercing gaze, which sets the tone for the campaign. Since the couple called it quits after four years together, Shake has focused on her modeling career. Two days after news of the breakup broke in June, she spent some time in Iceland on a work trip, and five days later walked in a runway show in Florence, Italy. Shake and Cooper share a two-year-old daughter, Leah. Despite calling it quits, the couple remains committed to maintaining a positive relationship for their daughter's sake. A source previously told People, quote, it's clear that Bradley and Arena had the same goals for their daughter. They're both wonderful parents. Another source says Arena's number one priority is their daughter, adding she's such a hands-on mom. She takes her to the park, to classes, to play dates, and just adores her. And those are your Star Tracks for today. All right, guys, stay with us. We are loving up Demi Lovato today. Her new post really inspiring all of us in a big way. Plus, Tony Hale revealing some of the sweetest reasons that he is trying to live in the moment. And did you know that he's actually a mall walker? It's true. Wait until you hear he's walking the malls with. That's coming up in just a little bit. All right, guys, I love this story today. Demi Lovato is confident, and she is not sorry about it. On Thursday, Demi showed off her body in a leopard print bikini on Instagram. The photo is unedited, which was taken during her summer getaway to Bora Bora. The singer is looking over her shoulder as she wades in knee-deep water while featuring her backside, and she looks great. Yeah, in a lengthy caption, Demi revealed to her 73 million Instagram followers that it wasn't easy to post an unedited photo as she has a fear of exposing the cellulite and imperfections of her to the world. She says in part, quote, this is my biggest fear a photo of me in a bikini, unedited, 
And guess what? It's sell you lit. Love that. Uh, I'm just literally so tired of being ashamed of my body, editing it. Yes, the other bikini pics were edited, and I hate that I did that, but it's the truth so that others think I'm their idea of what beautiful is, but it's just not me. So she's being very honest. Here. I love the cellulite because society's told us for so long, can't have cellulite, can't have stretch marks. And lately we've seen a lot of celebrities show off their bodies and show off stretch marks and cellulite. And I think it's so empowering yeah. to women everywhere. Demi continues saying, so here's me, unashamed, unafraid, proud to own a body that has fought through so much and will continue to amaze me when I hopefully give birth one day. She seems to be referring to her battles with addiction, mental illness, and disordered eating, as well as her overdose in July of 2018. She's definitely been through a lot and Demi shared what a relief it's been to be back in front of the screen without worrying about her weight and diet telling her fans it's such a great feeling to be back in TV and film while not stressing myself with a strenuous workout schedule before 14 hour days or depriving myself from a real birthday cake rather than opting for watermelon and whipped cream with candles because I was terrified of real cake and was miserable on some crazy diet. It's so bad reality for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, towards the end of the post, Demi tells her fans that this is her raw and real. She adds that she loves herself and that you should love her, love you too. She then teases that she's back in the studio working on an anthem. Demi later posted on her Insta stories that she is still shaking from that post. She admits that was so hard for her. She adds that she was blown away by the love and support. Uh, so which celebrities rallied around Demi exactly? Well, Glad you asked. A lot did. Bachelor Nation fan favorite Big Mike flirtily writes, look at me like that again, love yourself. <laughs> People are shipping these two. So when, on his season, when he was on The Bachelorette and Hannah's season, you know, Demi was tweeting at him and everything. I don't think they've met yet, but I think they should. And then Demi was at the finale. Yeah. So she's like in that, she is like paying attention to that scene. And he is paying attention to her on the gram. Yeah. Megan Mullally from Will and Grace adds, this is gorgeous. Ronda Rousey praises the pop star saying that she looks even better without the editing and fellow pop star and body positive activist BB Rexa simply comments, yes, yes, yes. We know BB Rexa has been doing her, uh, speaking out a lot on her own about body image and things like that yeah. as well. Yeah. Last year, Demi spoke to her battle of overcoming body image issues and an eating disorder in a since deleted Instagram post she wrote, I've decided I'm letting go of my perfectionism and embracing freedom from self-criticism. Learning to love my body the way it is is challenging, but life-changing. Earlier this year, Demi proved that she had gotten even stronger when she fought back on her Instagram stories after spotting a headline that said she now has a, quote, fuller figure, to which she responded, saying that she is more than her weight. This is so awesome of her and I mean I saw this post and I immediately screenshot it sent to some of my friends to my sisters it's just a good reminder that at any phase in your life at any weight like it doesn't really matter you're beautiful you should embrace it and not to worry what other people think or what society yeah. is telling you what you should look like yeah there's so many things imposed and I guess for me every time one of these stories comes out a post like this happens the reaction to it shows how important it is that it's happening, right? And that yeah. there is representation of different th different body types and different looks, and everyone should be proud of who they are. When especially at a time where there's a lot of perfection on Instagram and everyone's editing and face tuning. A lot of touched um, up perfection, yeah, and right? Like fake perfection. Especially for me, like little girls see that, right. and then they think that they have to be that way, and that's why eating disorders, disordered eating, and body image dysmorphia is so common right now, and it's really sad. Yeah. But I think people like Demi Lovato, like BB Rexa, like Lizzo, like these women are so powerful and inspiring, and I, I I don't know. I really loved that she did this. Yeah. And I think it will hopefully inspire other celebrities to do that as well. Keep at it, ladies. Yeah. We are here for it. All right, we've been asking you which Demi Lovato song is the most empowering for you. Let's take a look. I know we are making you choose, which seems a little unfair. Confident. Dun, 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 confident. Dun, dun. Couldn't help it. There you go. 40% uh, skyscraper. Okay, yeah, I agree with that list. <laughs> <laughs> Keep voting, guys. You can sway the list. There's still time. But for now, we move on to this. All right, guys, time to talk Royals. We mentioned Meghan Markle coming to New York City. We'll talk about that in just a bit. But first, earlier this week, Princess Charlotte had her first day at school ever as she arrived at Thomas's Battersea alongside big brother Prince George, here to give us all the details on the official portrait, the significance of the dress Kate Middleton wore that day, and much more. Our People's Senior News Editor, Erin Hill, and our Royal Correspondent, Imogen Lloyd Webber. Thanks for being here, ladies. Of course. Good to Good talk to, see. to you. How much did we love this photo Adorable. of the whole family, the video of it, the pictures, everything about it coming to school on Thursday? Mm -hmm. The official portrait was released via Kensington's uh, Kensington Palace Twitter feed. Just fantastic. Aaron, break down the picture so for cute. us. So cute. Yeah, so we're seeing George in his big brother role, putting a loving arm around his little sister right before their first big day at school together. Of course, Charlotte join, joining George for the very first time at Thomas's Battersea um, in their school uniforms, looking ready to start the day. Charlotte's all smiles. Of course, later we saw her looking a little more timid and nervous. Yeah. Um, but she's certainly excited in this photo. If it was steps. like my two girls together, they'd be bribed. <laughs> 
to smile happily <laughs> right. because it was, you know, <laughs> they're kids. It's terrifying. It's terrifying. Yes. It's, a, it's a big day, big moment. Imogen, will Princess Charlotte get any special treatment at school? What's it feel like for them? I'm assuming the class isn't standing up curtsying every time she enters the room. <laughs> Absolutely not. There's definitely no Your Royal Highness in the classroom for Charlotte. Okay. Just like with George, she'll be, simply be known as Charlotte. Maybe Lottie, we know that's one of her nicknames. She's likely to be Charlotte Cambridge. George goes by George Cambridge. And that's following actually in William and Harry's footsteps. William and Harry were William Wales and Harry Wales. Okay. Of course, their dad is the Prince of Wales. Um, technically, the royal family's last name is Mountbatten Windsor. So Archie is likely to use that surname because he doesn't have any royal titles okay. yet. Charlotte is going to be very busy at school. Her curriculum will expose her to a variety of subjects like drama, art, and French. Plus, she's taking classes in ballet, music, computing, math, reading, and more as part of the Early Years program. I'm exhausted Lots every time I get the rundown. Busy, busy, busy. busy. Yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Kate Middleton looking great as well. And the style that she chose was very reminiscent of another royal mom that maybe royal watchers would have noticed. Tell us about this. Yeah, so Kate was looking really fresh. Still had her summer tan coming off vacation. She's wearing this really beautiful uh, floral Michael Kors dress, which we've actually seen before she wore it to uh, uh, Meghan and Harry's wedding rehearsal last year, but it was reminiscent of a dress that Princess Diana wore in the summer of 1992 when she was photographed le leaving uh, St. Mary's Hospital where she was visiting a friend. Yeah, so, we'll see the photo um, there. yeah, definitely some similarities between these two dresses. Great summer look. All right, Meghan Markle, some news about her. Mm. Wednesday announced her first official royal engagement. Post-maternity leave, Imogen, what have we learned about that? Yeah, it's going to be Thursday, September the 12th, to launch the capsule collection of the women's workwear she created with her designer friend, Misha Nunu. It's the first official work engagement since Archie was born on May the 6th, so that's just over four months since the birth. And the clothing line will benefit her patronage Smart Works, which is a charity that helps women find employment with coaching tips and professional attire for their job interviews. Um, she shared that first glimpse of her project in a candid Instagram story last month. Yeah, when she was meeting people as they were yeah. arriving. Really great video there. Absolutely. And such a great project. I love this. Yeah. I know we've talked a lot about yeah. it. I really, really love that. On Tuesday, while launching a new eco-friendly travel uh, partnership called Travelist, Prince Harry leading this thing up. It's, of course, it's, it's between leading players and the travel industry and also his foundation. It's sort of a partnership there. Um, he broke his silence over this recent private jet controversy. At the event, he also revealed the inspiration behind his green initiative, the travel initiative. Aaron, who inspired Prince Harry in this particular thing? Yeah, so this is Harry promoting eco-friendly tourism. And he mentioned that back in 2012, during a visit to the Caribbean, he uh, came into contact with a seven-year-old boy who was pretty bold and tugged on his shirt and said, because of your country, my country's coral reef is dying um, and that really struck Harry that this little boy realized its uh, actions from other countries from around the world that affects his own so that really stuck with Harry and it's part of the inspiration for this new initiative Wow it's really inspiring and, and interesting that he uh, that something impacted him so much mm -hmm. to take this kind of action Prince Harry made the trip to Amsterdam to launch this initiative alone it turned out to be a blessing in disguise for the new father Imogen, why is that? Because he spent a night there alone, so he actually managed to get some sleep for once. <laughs> as any new yeah. parent can understand. He joked it was definitely the best night's sleep he'd had for four months. Um, and the rest of the nights, as we know, for Harry began immediately. He would have got about two hours sleep after making the birth announcement. And William actually publicly teased Harry after Archie's birth with a warning, I'm very pleased and glad to welcome my brother to the sleep deprivation society that is <laughs> parenting. Yeah, welcome. It's a, it's yeah. a tough course, <laughs> and it, it's relentless, too. Yeah. Um, all right, let's talk about this. Meghan Markle heading to New York City, a surprise trip to watch her close friend Serena Williams playing in the U.S. Open. And maybe get a night's sleep. And maybe get a night's sleep right. as well. Uh, talk to us about this trip. What are, what are our thoughts? Well, this is a total last-minute trip, of course, depending on whether Serena made it to the finals, which of course she did. Yeah. So on Saturday, Megan will be there to cheer her friend on, which is really exciting. And she hasn't been back in America since her baby shower in February, so this is a big deal. Her first trip away from Archie. Um, of course, he'll be home with, with Harry, so this is a really great opportunity for her. And, and they've been friends since 2010. Right. So they met at the Super Bowl. So this is, they've been a long time. Long time yeah. friendship. And it will be maybe a nice a break for Megan to Absolutely. be able to Absolutely. She'll come get over. some sleep on the plane, yeah, frankly. They... <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for being here. Good to see you. Something's not right. Charlene, you don't know that. All right? We're going to go to the hospital. Why the hell are you so calm? Because I'm not jumping to conclusions. You didn't hear him, Richard. He's in trouble. We will find him. You didn't hear him, Richard. He's not safe. <laughs> Wow, such an intense scene. Amy Ryan and Greg Kinnear are there searching for their son in the new thriller, Strange But True. It's such a great film. Amy joins us now. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Yeah, good to talk to you. Uh, okay, twists and turns galore. Yes. It's it, the Spoilers are just around every corner here. So give us the safest <laughs> elevator pitch I, for, yeah. for what's happening here for people that have no clue. Strange But True follows the Chase family who hasn't really been coping well since their son died five years 
earlier. And the, 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 the story starts where his, the son's high school uh, girlfriend arrives on their doorstep pregnant, claiming to be carrying the son of her dead boyfriend yeah. from five years ago. So the sense of, you know, a very um, distraught family yeah. further into the death. Shock waves. So, and chaos and, chaos yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. why is this woman torturing us? We want to throttle yeah. her. But then they start to think, well, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> and the implausible, the ridiculous, implausible idea starts to really undo this family. It's intense. And yeah. you're so good in these thrillers. Was this always a genre you wanted to tackle? I mean, Gone Baby Gone, come on. Like, you're so um, good in that. I, I enjoy, I mean, no, I enjoy a good script, well written, and this was one of those, and it was a great, yeah, um, also the good story, but it's also really had fleshed out characters. So um, it's, it, that's what I enjoy. Mm -hmm. Like if it's comedy or if it's a thriller or, you know, yeah. with that. Look, I know you're, you're an actor and I know it's acting, but a storyline where a mother loses a son, it's so traumatizing. And then as a parent, I mean, I just think that that headspace would be very difficult to get into. What's your strategy for that? Uh, well, Is it I, helpful maybe even to get there in the depth as an actor? Well, I, I'm I'm fortunate. I can just visit this story and for a day job, and you know, leave it. It's 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 almost too hard to really think. And I I would never imagine that I could understand what no, someone right. is going through. But uh, but again, like just relying on the script and the 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 book written by John Sorrells right. that the movie's based on is just so rich with uh, information. Sure, it's yeah. kind of like having the answers to the test. Yeah. So. Your character is a highly skilled librarian. Did you do any <laughs> extra is. prep for this or research? Did you go back to libraries? Oh. Uh, the Dewey Decimal yeah. Yeah. System? Yeah, right? That's exactly how I started. I mean, I'm going to need to go to a Dewey Decimal <laughs> System. Yes, I please. actually grew up <laughs> with the Dewey Decimal System. So I remember libraries The shell, before. like the little drawers. Yes, and yes the whole, of yeah. course. And how to read the numbers with the, yeah, yeah. You know what that comes, this is weird to say. When I think about that, I can almost smell the library. Is that weird? No, it's not weird. Th don't you see, like, no, great. The, the, Libraries are yeah, good. Like and, musty, and dusty, dusty. The musty, smell. dusty, yeah. those drawers and, and that they, whole they thing. They were very silent clothes. Yes. It's very, <laughs> every little noise is so loud. Anyway, there was more library to it than that, but li yeah, library talk, guys. Um, okay, great ca great cast. Greg Kinnear, who you, we were just talking about, you've done a couple movies with him now. Yeah, The Green Zone and now Strange But True. Yeah, Margaret Qualley as well, Blythe Danner. Yeah. It seems like it could be a really fun group. It was. Total yep. juxtaposition yep. of this very serious, heavy tone. Yeah. So give me a vibe for the cast. Cameras were not rolling. You guys uh, have time together. What's going on? Actually, Greg Kinnear and I, like, we had a scene where we were supposed to enter this dark basement, and we were tucked behind a wall waiting for cameras. We just became like school children. You start giggling because you're also, it's kind of scary, even yeah. though it's fake and it's a set, but it's dark, and it, you're going down into a basement. and. We would, you know, we would have to kind of keep it together, but it wasn't so easy. Yeah. <laughs> Next to Greg Kinnear. Yeah, yeah, right. And Margaret Qualley is very talented. Oh, she's, she's Annie fantastic. McDowell's daughter. Seems yeah. to take after her mom. What was it like working with her? Oh, she's uh, just a really cool, like wonderful, open, talented woman, and um, I was I was deeply impressed with her. Very, very prepared and very just on point. Well, as we get on the list, we want a story about every cast member. Blythe. Yeah, such a, such a legend. <laughs> luminous. Luminous. <laughs> luminous. I mean, Is there a favorite just, memory uh, of, the, of your time with her? Oh, I mean, just anything. If she's talking about what she ate for breakfast that day, <laughs> you're just like, tell me more. Yeah, you know? I'll bet, right? Yeah, That's yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, um, we love to do some flashbacks here on People Now. So fans will always love you as Holly from The Office. Uh -huh. And some fun news for your co-star, Kate Flannery. She's joining Dancing with the Stars, yes, which is premiering soon. Amazing. How do you think she's going to do? Oh, uh, well, I know she's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> she's going to have fun, I'm sure. Do you have a go-to dance move? Uh, no, I just, you know, it depends what the beat is. OK. <laughs> are, you the, are you a wallflower in that kind of environment, or are you in the middle of the dance circle? No, I, I'm in the middle. I watch, uh, for, I'll watch for a long while, and then I'll go in. Okay. Yeah. I'll guess. start Wallflower. Okay, start oh, Wallflower. Okay. That's Feel a good, it out. That's a good I'll strategy. Wait for, I'll wait for yeah. the right song. Yeah, yeah. okay. Got it. But I, lo I love watching people dance as much as I love dancing. Yeah. Well, especially to see what you're up against, right? And exactly. It's like, oh. How do you think you would do on Dancing with the Stars? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank no, you. No, no, I'm not good with any, like, uh, choreograph. Same. Oh, you just so have to feel I'm it in free, the moment. Free, yeah, free flow. Uh, <laughs> free flow. Yeah. That's how I am. Like, who knows? Who cares if you're on the beat as long as you're just having fun, right? Feel it in the moment. Yeah. Your other co star from The Office, Steve Carell, you two teamed up again to work on Beautiful Boy, a very yeah. intense Oh, such film. a great movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing yeah. about both of you is you're able to tackle these comedic parts, but also really heavy material as well. What's your favorite thing about working with him? Oh, so there's there's not just one thing. I just I just think he's an extraordinary actor. So when you get a chance to work off someone so great, I mean, you're just you're in heaven, and he's just one of the kindest people as well. And you know, 
just a great guy. So. Yeah, you, you also reunited with another Office co-star, Mindy Kaling, for Late Night. Yeah. It's just like this cast, Our you guys are all just yeah. kind of bopping around together, project to project. Talk about that uh, experience, working with her. On oh, that. Mindy, Mindy, her script was fantastic, and I got a call kind of late in the process to join, and I said yes before even like reading it, you know, so of course I'll come play with you guys. and. Uh, you know, Mindy, her, she was a brand new mom and on set every day starring in this film and producer. And I was just just in awe of her that she was standing, let alone like creating something so spectacular. It's so unique that a cast, I think, would mm -hmm. create these bonds and then be able to continue not only what seem to be great friendships, but working relationships as everyone's career continues to evolve. That, yeah. that seems like a very unique... That's kind of really the only way we see each other. Is it? <laughs> like, you know, they live in LA, or I'm in New York, like, you know, so... Yeah. It's easier to work together than make dinner plans. Uh, yeah. Sure, right. That All makes right. Sense. Since we went down memory lane, we're going to keep doing that, right? With we're a in game the here. that we call <laughs> oh, oh Snap. Snap. So we're going to show you a picture. You try to remember a story or fun memory about it. Ready? Okay. Uh, all right, here we go. This is from an episode <laughs> of Home Improvement. Oh my God. Home Improvement. Look at the look at the Miss Claire all curls. They that was like a hot roller hair. 1992. I mean, that's that's. That a was my first TV job in LA. Was it? And that's my friend Tom Verica. We became friends on this show and we're still friends. He's really? A guy, yeah. On Home Improvement, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. That's great. All right, we have another one here. <laughs> I still love that show. No, I know, okay. same. <laughs> like my first show uh, growing up. Another picture here, a streetcar named Desirecast at the Roundabout Theater uh, at Studio 54. Yeah, that's me and Chris Bauer, another great actor. Yeah, what goes through your mind when you think back to kind of those days? Uh, well, that's that's one of my all-time favorite plays, so I, I felt really just blessed that I got the opportunity to play that, that yeah. part in that play. It was That was kind of outer, outer body experience. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, like a bucket list type thing. Yeah, for yeah. sure, yeah. Sure, sure. All right, uh, let's go on to the next one here with Philip Seymour uh, Hoffman and Patricia uh, and Clarkson, Patricia Clarkson yeah. Match Point. It was an after party in New York City, December 2005. Oh my gosh, well those are two, those are two actors that I, as I, well, they were friends, but I, look towards for advice and life and how you live in New York as an artist and actor and how to keep it real and keep it, you know, going. Yeah. All right, we have this one, The Wire premiere in January of 2008. What goes through? Oh. What a group. <laughs> what a crew. Uh, Motley crew. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, a bunch of misfits, but like the dearest, most amazing people. Yeah. I was a big fan of the show before I joined it, so when I joined it in the second season, I mean, I, I was I was quite starstruck by that group and yeah. being on that show. Who, was, who starstruck you the most? Well, I mean, everyone was so different. Suddenly, like, you know, the Baltimore actors have English accents, and, uh, <laughs> you know, there's, a, there's an Irish accent. I mean, they're just, it was such a, just a, a large, massive pool of talent. I mean, Andre Royo, I mean, he's, they're all, they're all incredible. I can yeah. really pick well, one out. Well, it was, must be really cool jumping onto a set after you're a fan of it. It's so yeah. good to talk yeah. to you about all of this. Thank yes, you thank for you. letting My us uh, yeah. plunge down memory lane there with you. <laughs> uh, you can see more of Amy in Strange But True. It's in theaters today, Friday, September 6th. Check it out. Thank you. <gasps> they left without me. Need some help, dude. Oh no, I got a plan. <laughs> you got some fly moves. Oh, chickens can't fly. No, I mean your moves are fly. Eh, only about 10 feet, then I get really tired. Never mind. Meet your new favorite chicken. Netflix dropped Archibald's <laughs> next big thing about an adventurous, happy-go-lucky chicken who is just living in the moment. Clearly already my favorite one. Tony Hale voices Archibald, and he really opens up about choosing joy in his own life and living in the moment just like Archibald. Tony absolutely loves his daughter, Loy. She has a great story about how she got involved in this project. Watch. I did this book years Thanks ago so called Archibald's Next Great Big to Thing. Great to talk to you. Thank and you so much. And I did so it while Congrats. I was on Arrested Development. I realized I was on a great show, great cast, and yet I was still looking to my next thing. And I was like, man, I, if I get to the end of my life, I'm going to be like always looking to the next thing and missing where I am. So Archibald the chicken, this precious little chicken, learns this lesson of kind of everything is a big thing. It's not coming. And so in the series, now he treats everything like a big thing. He sees the best in everyone in every situation. And I, it gives me so much joy because I feel like our world is just seeing the worst in each other. That's all it is. And he's just always kind of yes-anding his way through life. Uh, he's just kind of, it's just joy. So it's been a blast. And I like that kind of as, a, as an adult, it's sort of like, all right, be present in the moment. Appreciate yeah. what you have yeah. right now, not yeah. sort of waiting for happiness. Which is really hard, by the way. Yeah. I mean, my default is to be checked out. 
You know, my default is just to kind of live in anxiety or, you know, whatever it is. And it's challenging to be like, no, I'm going to choose joy. And Archibald is always choosing joy. The book, uh, as that's happening, was a show, a TV show version, Always the Plan. Whose idea was that? No, I did this book just as kind of, I met this artist, Victor Huckabee, years ago. And then him and my friend, Tony Biagni, and the lead illustrator of this publishing company, Misty Manley, we did this book just because... I had gotten my dream on Arrested Development, and it still was like, whoa, I'm still looking at the next thing. I don't want, that's crazy. And so I wanted to do a book about this, and then his, I loved his artwork, and so we kind of just made it. Yeah. Yeah, if you had to describe Archibald in a tweet, what would it oh, say? Oh, in a tweet. 40 characters. <laughs> in a tweet. Uh, I would say meet, meet the most joyful, um, free, full of life chicken I know. Perfect. I think that, I'm, yes, that's enough. The oh, letters yeah. are right. Okay, <laughs> great, got, great, we got great, in great, under. Great, thank you. Uh, Archibald's sister shares your real daughter's name. Yes, Loy. Loy. And it was now, now, I mean, she still thinks it's cool, but back when she was, this was, mm, she's, this was like seven years ago. There's my precious little angel. Um, this was seven years ago, so she was like around eight or nine. She must have loved it. She really loved, maybe she was younger than that, but she helped design the way Lloyd looked. Oh, cool. So she wanted her to have Argyle socks, <laughs> and like pigtails, and it was fun to do that. So together. that was a real collaboration. Yeah, it was She neat. got to get in on Dad's thing. Yes. That's really yes, cool. Yes. And, and what was her review of the show? I mean, the book's one thing, now to see it in animated. She likes it. I mean, you know, she, she really likes it. It's cool because <laughs> one thing her and I love to do is go to the mall. We like the mall. And so there's an episode about mall walkers. So I consider her and I mall walkers. Oh, like doing the laps. Yeah. Okay, so we <laughs> we like a central AC mall. <laughs> and so indoor, uh, indoor, nice climate and control. So one's mail worker. So we we there's been a lot of inspiration from Loy about the show. He was a lot of fun. We also played this really fun game where we gave him a line and asked if this is either Buster Bluth or Gary Walsh saying it. And it was surprising. It was surprising, it was surprising. to see his, some so of his that's takes. That's rolling out on Monday. And so what he remembered. Yeah. For that. All right, take a look at this. That girl Kelly, I think she's trying to like rip my head off or something. Watch out! You gotta defend yourself. Put me down, you freak! Those eyes scare me every time. <laughs> K through 12 is Melanie Martinez's new album and her first feature film. The movie follows a brave-hearted girl and her charming best friends as they embark on a mission to take down an oppressive schooling system. And we have the musician, actress, and director here in studio. Melanie, thanks for joining us. Thank you for before we get into it, we were talking before. You have 38 tattoos. It's Close, pretty impressive. 39, 38. Yeah. Last yeah. Time I counted, it Are was you planning on keeping going or? Um, probably, but. I probably won't go like past here or on my neck. I'm just going for the more stickery kind of. Yeah, that makes it, yeah. Yeah, it's fun. They're really cool. Thanks, thank yeah. you very much. Uh, and by the way, congrats on being a multi-hyphenate already. Yeah. <laughs> Director, musician, actor, you've got it all going on. You've been working on this movie since around 2015, 2016. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to, as we were saying before, like the aesthetic of it, the creative elements of this are incredible. How does it feel yeah. to have it done? You can look, there it is, it happened. I can't believe it, honestly. Like, I'm so thrilled, and I've just been reading all of the messages from fans um, who've seen it so far, and the messages are so beautiful, and my heart is just exploding with love, so I'm just beyond grateful. That's really. so great. Yeah, yeah I can tell really that you're really cool. yeah, radiating about Yeah, the visuals are it. amazing. Where do you Thank draw you. the inspiration for a project um, like this? I'm really inspired by pop surrealism, so a lot of artists like Mark Ryden, Nicoletta Cecily really inspire me. I love Tim Burton movies. Edward Scissorhands is one of my faves. Oh, I, can, I, can, I, I can see that sprinkle Yeah, down. absolutely. So, yeah. When it comes to the, the themes of the movie, there are a lot of different themes here. What was really important for you to get across and communicate? Um, I think just my biggest intention with creating the film was to display school as a condensed version of life. Um, and to Which also, really works, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think that, you know, they're very parallel, especially with like, and also there's a lot of double meaning, you know, things uh, about like the music industry, or really any industry in general. Um, so, yeah, I think my main goal too was just to make sure that I was creating music and art that can help people heal in some way, shape, or form. That's mm -hmm. always my intention with anything yeah. I create. One of the themes of the movie focuses is it's bullying, mm -hmm. and that's very common right now in schools. It's always Absolutely. been. Did you draw from your own experiences? What Definitely. was that like? Um, growing up, you know, I had like one best friend, and I would kind of like, I would make friends with like all these different kind of groups and was able to see a little peek into, you know, each group's kind of life. And I just remember, you know, 
I don't know, just being bullied over like small things, whether it be my gap or things that uh, made me an individual, but I was super self-conscious about it because of that, and it was really just people projecting their insecurities mm -hmm. onto me, which I think a lot of the times that's kind of what it is. It's like a defense mechanism. So, you know, uh, I wanted to make the film in part to like really uh, help kids like understand that, understand where it comes from, that it's not just like that person, you know, um, who's like, in, you know, like it's not like they want to be mean. They're just, that's kind of, their own deep insecurities, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So and once you learn that, it yeah. does yeah. help exactly. a lot. Well, it's, our, yeah. it's crazy how hard it is to learn that, especially as a, as a younger person. Mm -hmm. um, you introduced the character Crybaby mm -hmm. uh, in the music videos for your last um, album. Now this follows her a bit, ends on a cliffhanger, K-12 yeah. does. Is there another movie in the works? Yes. Do you want to get your hands in, on the yes. directorial side of that again? Definitely. Um, I have my next film planned out as far as what I want to do and the film after that, and they both have albums attached to them. So, I mean, what time frame? Are we talking a year, two years? I'm not sure. Hopefully it'll be faster this time. It won't be like four years because, <laughs> you know, just because I've done it at least once. So now I know, you know, I'm past all those learning curves that I had to kind of reach and figure out. And now the momentum's process. there, right? Exactly, so it can, sure. yeah, it can yeah. keep going. As you mentioned, K-12, also an album. I know it's probably hard to choose because they're all your babies. Yeah. If you had to choose your favorite song or scene to film, what would it be? Okay, I think favorite song is Nurse's Office and favorite scene to film... Ooh, that, that one I don't know if I could answer. Uh, I would say the whole thing was just such a special experience. and It was very intense, but... Um, the bus scene was intense for me. Yeah. Oh, really? I love that, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, all of it was really magical yeah. for me, so I can't pick a scene. But. A big part of your music and uh, now this project is to sort of touch on topics that maybe people are afraid to talk Definitely. about or aren't talking yeah. enough about. Mm -hmm. um, you've opened up about fans reaching out to you and your DMs mm -hmm. and you responding to them and yeah. things like that. Is there a fan ex encounter that really stands out to you? Um, I think that in person I have a lot of special fan encounters. Like, I'll just uh, run into someone that will, you know, talk about how they're, uh, you know, what their experience with listening to my music or watching my music videos and how it shaped them as a person and helped them in some way, shape, or form. And I'll talk to them for like, you know, like a good like hour, just like on the street, just for a long time, just getting emotional crying, you know, like. Which is life changing it's, for a person, yeah. right? It can me be. as well, you know, it's a, it's a huge blessing. I'm just, I'm super grateful to like have people even uh, care about my art and music and to resonate with it on such a deep level, it's just. It's more than what I could have dreamed of. That's amazing, yeah. especially taking time for the fans. Uh, let's play a little game. Ready for a quick oh, round of rapid fire? Ooh, here okay, we go. starting with if you could have any other career, what would it be? Ooh, um, I'll just say a poet. Mm. I can see yep. it. I think yeah. you're basically that already. <laughs> uh, what, <laughs> favorite way to wind down? Like after a day like today, what are you gonna do? Oh, um, probably going to go home, maybe watch some cartoons, chill out. Okay. Yeah, probably go to sleep, honestly. I haven't slept much because I'm just so excited. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, favorite movie? Favorite movie, uh, probably Alice by Jan Svank Major. Yeah. Oh, uh, one musical artist that you are loving right now? Um, uh, Tierra Wack. Okay, last show you binge watched? Uh, Pen15. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Yeah. It's my favorite. Sweet or salty snacks? Um, both. Depends on the mood. I love sweet and sweet. Oh, together, right? Yeah. Like a good trail mix that has a little bit of both. Like, yeah. I'm getting excited about this. Oh, Coming alive here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ani, thank you so much for joining us. Thank Congrats you so on much. everything. Thank Everyone, you. be sure to check out K through 12, premiering on YouTube and select theaters right now. Loved by millions. I will always remember David Cassidy as the biggest star in the world. But fame and fortune. He's selling the most records. He's filling the biggest stadiums. Hid his darkest secrets. It was troubling for me. People perceived me as something that I wasn't. I was quite surprised to find out that David Cassidy had some sort of secret life. Most people had no idea about David's demons. David Cassidy, Fatal Secret. That was a look at HLN's How It Really Happened with Hill Harper, David Cassidy, Fatal Secret. It takes a closer look on the life of 1970s teen idol and heartthrob David Cassidy. Now, the special features exclusive footage of the late teen idol, including a 2014 interview with Pierce Morgan Live, where David publicly admits for the first time that he's an alcoholic. I got to be a little part of this. It was just really fascinating to go back through and relive the really dramatic phases of his life, yeah. the highs and lows and all of it. Yeah, and David Cassidy was a teen sensation. Women and girls went crazy over the young star. He became best known as Keith Partridge from the 1970s musical sitcom, The Partridge Family. So take a quick look at a young David Cassidy. Somebody's out to drive me crazy. <laughs> it all started when I lost my pickle. <laughs> Maybe we should call the Bureau of Missing Vegetables. <laughs> 
We all remember that. Now, instant fame and adoration, as we learned in the special, was too much for David. He ended up walking away at the height of his career. David Cassidy struggled with alcohol abuse, which would affect him for the rest of his life. And fans got a close look at David's struggles during one of his shows in early 2017. Take a look. In 2017, it was probably one of the worst visions or scenes anybody could imagine for a pop legend on stage. It's so meaningful to me. I don't know what I did, but... While on stage, he was forgetting the lyrics to some of these songs that he had been singing for decades. It seemed that this was an alcohol-related issue. Then, and shortly after that incident at the concert, David Cassidy came to People Magazine to reveal he had been diagnosed with early stage dementia. So then in a shocking twist, we learned that David had no signs of dementia. It was sadly alcohol that took over his whole life. It's a fascinating and heartbreaking story to look at David Cassidy's life like never before. Check out how it really happened with Hill Harper, David Cassidy, Fatal Secret, Sunday at 9 p.m. on HLN. All right, guys, we're just about out of time. Coming up next week, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. 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 We're getting excited. Wow. <laughs> we're honing it here. Joined by uh, <laughs> television host Jerry Springer. He's going to be here. We're asking him all about his new daytime court show. Oh, I can't wait. Plus, from the much-anticipated film, The Goldfinch, Oaks Fegley is also here live. Thanks for watching and have a happy weekend. Bye, guys. Bye.